Uh, I'm very happy that you're all here in uh, such big numbers because it's uh, the second week and also the first week we had uh, a room like this full of people. So it means that all these people are all somehow involved, let's say, in, uh, yeah, in the CDATANET infrastructure. And you're all, you are, uh, yeah, you are the technicians, the data managers, so it means that, okay. So you're all, let's say, uh, involved in the, uh, yeah, in the maintenance and, and the, the management of the infrastructure. And you're all dealing with the data that you collect from various, uh, uh, let's say, various uh, acquisitions and make them ready for sharing by the infrastructure of uh, CDATANET. And that's, uh, it's very nice you're all here. And also because it's a, it's a special uh, you know, step forward because we are uh, upgrading the system and we're using doing that as part of the CData Cloud project. And as the name says, we go the CDATANET goes to the cloud. And uh, today, we especially, we will talk about the uh, the connections, let's say the, the local connections and how those will be connected to the cloud and how then the new system will be uh, will communicate with, with users, also using the cloud in, the, in, in between. And that's quite an exciting uh, step forward. It's also a complex step, but uh, but you'll see that we made very good progress. And then later today, you uh, you hear more about the details, I say, about the components, but also you will hear about the implementation plan, uh, how we're going to do together, let's say, in the coming months, till the end of the year, going to get these new connections working, so that by early next year, we can launch the whole system to the outside world. And from that point on, we will, should be operational again, but then in the new system. And also it's important that we do all this while the existing system, of course, keeps on going. So there's no, uh, no, it's business as usual for the, uh, for the normal system. But in parallel, we're going to start with the, uh, building up the, uh, the upgrade and moving to the new domain. Um, what I want to give you first is some background about the CData Cloud project and how it's related and why it's important that we all are working on this uh, infrastructure. Uh, now, as you see, what's the rationale between, behind CData Cloud? CData Cloud is, in fact, a successor project to the CData 2, and that was a success to CData 1, and that was a successor to C-Search. So over time, we had a lot of these uh, big projects, and they were aiming at setting, setting the, the standards and also setting the services. While on, <coughs> uh, attached to this or connected to this, we have a lot of other projects where we use those standards and services, and we roll them out, and we bring in more data centers to also to help populate more data. And also, of course, diversify or, uh, let's say, upgrade the standards to be able to fit all the different types of data. And as you know, that uh, standards, they are never sitting still. And also technology is moving on. And, and we are getting more and more into the, uh, the cyber infrastructure. We're going into the cloud. And that's why we said it's time for CDA to cloud, so the, the core team, to continue working on the uh, uptake of new standards and new, uh, new technology. At the same time, we said we can't do it all alone because we are data managers. We are very, uh, you know, very well equipped for the marine domain. But if we go to the cloud, it would be nice to work with a capable partner who are more experienced in cloud infrastructure. And for that purpose, we work together. We have chosen to work together with UDOT. And that's also because UDOT is already uh, playing quite a big role in the uh, European Open Science Cloud, which is a new initiative by the Commission. And they really want everybody to, uh, all the research infrastructures, to, to somehow get involved in the, in the European Open Science Cloud. And there are two ways to get involved. One is just wait and then be, uh, yeah, let's say, they push you forward and they tell you what to do. Or you can do the other thing, what we did. We said we take our own initiative. We already start working together with UDOT. We develop further our infrastructure. And then we make it fit for connecting to the EOSC. And they will see that we are very, a very nice component in that EOSC, that uh, they can't uh, overlook us, let's say. And that's how it, uh, it started. So we, um, we started in November 2016 with a four-year plan to work on those standards and working on adopting the cloud. If you look at UDOT itself, UDOT is, a, is a, an association of uh, academic uh, computing centers and data centers. Uh, and they are uh, <coughs> divided also or, or spread all over Europe. And in the project, we are working with five of them, let's say five uh, partners from that consortium. But in practice, we are working, of course, with this UDOT consortium. And that uh, there is, after me, there's a presentation on UDOT, a little bit about positioning them in the, in the European market and how they are involved in uh, European projects and the, and the cloud. And uh, so it's a very strategic uh, cooperation. If we look at the general challenges for CDATA, it's... Um, 
Yeah, like I said, it's the successor project. That's one. It's already a challenge, but not so much. <laughs> it's uh, we want to continue with uh, the standards because there are always new data coming forward. There are new instruments coming forward. Let's let's say, recently we had uh, HF radar being adopted more and more, and so the a format had to be prepared to make it fit for handling HF radar data. Uh, also, we want to improve the services and, and the products that we are making. And as you know, we have quite a, a number of directory services and also, uh, let's say, products that uh, we make. Uh, also, we want to adopt those new technologies, so make use of them, useful use of those. And also, a very important thing is that so far we always concentrated more on getting data in, so more on the backbone, how to get the data centers connected and make sure that they are all bringing in harmonized, standardized data. And uh, in the new situation, we, we continue doing that, of course, but also we want to have more attention for the users, listen more to users and make it for them possible to do more with all those services and the data that we are providing. And so that's part of the, the, uh, the ID. And for that purpose, we, we made this overall plan. We call it the blue cloud. But it means that on the, on the bottom half, you see that we make uh, data, let's say, accessible and uh, discoverable. And that's the, the business as usual. Then we have on the left, we have standards. And they can be IT standards and they can be, let's say, data standards, vocabularies and others. And by this work, we make all the data, let's say, uh, yes, available in a standardized, harmonized way by this, this little gate here. And what we are doing now in CDA the Cloud is, is more and more also developing the top half, which are added value services. Uh, downstream services, and one, one nice name for this is that we make a virtual research environment. And that virtual research environment will allow people to work with the data, this mass of data which is down, yeah, from coming from the upstream services, and which are being <coughs> updated, there's more data every day, really, believe me, it's, it's quite a big operation. Uh, and the other side, I say, then we want people to work with them, and we want to bring the data and the cloud applications together. So no more downloading in that sense, but really bringing people to the cloud, having uh, high performance computing facilities and ways to use the data and applications in workflows and to do their products, analyses, etc. together in a collaborative environment. And that's something that uh, the VRE is making also good progress. So there will be another workshop uh, later in, uh, in, the, in the project and there we will focus more on the VRE and, uh, and how that uh, how that is working and how that has uh, worked out. And also you can follow, of course, all these developments always in the newsletter because we publish a newsletter once in a while on the, on the portal and there you can find these, these latest developments. But let's say first we have to concentrate on, on the discovery and access and the, the upgrading of uh, using the cloud. Uh, CData itself is uh, it's not standing alone. It has quite a, a long uh, cooperation, a association. <laughs> And for instance, we are working together with the Copernicus, the Marine Environmental Monitoring Services. And in that case, we provide standards for, uh, for the data, but also we, uh, we help to provide them with long-term archives. Because in the CMEMS, they use, uh, let's say, a lot of operational data for, uh, for uh, assimilating the models, but they also need long-term validated archives to calibrate those models. And therefore, they need the historical uh, time series. And we have uh, signed an MOU again with uh, between CDATANET and, and uh, Copernicus to continue in the coming years, let's say, more and more synergy and more and more cooperation. And that's quite good because, you know, the Copernicus program is also quite a big program in the European uh, domain with the Sentinel, uh, well, let's say, a, a massive uh, in investment in the Sentinel satellites. <laughs> and, uh, and the Copernicus are the ground services to work with those. Then we have the Marine Strategy Framework that's more from policy. And, uh, and what we do is that we, we collect more and more gamma street data, let's say water quality data, and also about the, 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 the good environmental status of, of Europe. And uh, quite recently, uh, through the AWNET gamma street, we were able, let's say, to have now an agreement with the EEA, the European Environment Agency, and the DG Environment, that they now accept member states to use the CData infrastructure for giving access to, to data for the MSFD process. And that's quite a big step forward because, let's say, before already we were collecting all these data, but we were, they were always uh, being told, let's say, that EA has their own infrastructure, the AONET. But now they really see that we can uh, provide the difference, especially in the Mediterranean and in the Black Sea, where we have much more data than their own infrastructure and, their, and the regional sea conventions. And this way, 
Now this this uh, very important step forward is made, a policy step. And that also means there's a lot of sustainable uh, sustainability uh, possible for the CDATA infrastructure because it serves then a policy. And the policy, of course, is, is management and uh, governance, which is always going on. And uh, the member states are uh, a full stakeholder in this. Also, we work together with large monitoring systems. So there are many networks, uh, coastal networks, there are uh, ocean networks, like in the Atlantos project or in uh, Euro Argo or uh, Jericho Next and others. And they all are building or operating or uh, further developing uh, these networks to collect data on a, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. And they provide a big stream of data, and those data have to have to find a way for long-term archives. And that's also, again, we, uh, where we play a role. Then we, uh, we team up with a lot of European projects. And in those projects, there are in the past a couple, like uh, Black Sea Scene, there's the Cusp Info, there's GUCs, there is uh, Eurofleets. So many of these projects, they in fact, they adopt and they adapt the CData infrastructure. And that means that we make, we test out if our standards and services are fit for their purpose. And if not, we adapt them to make sure and for one, one uh, example of adapting is, for instance, the vocabularies, that we then make the vocabularies more rich to be able to, to handle all the terms that are also relevant for those domains, like the geology, geophysics, uh, biology, ecosystem, etc. Uh, we also do that on an on international scale. We work together in the ODIP project, the Ocean Data Interoperability Platform. That's a six-year uh, running already, with, uh, together with USA, together with Australia, together with Canada. And there we tune. Uh, in fact, we compare our, our standards with their standards and to see, and then we see how we can interoperate with each other. And in a couple of cases, we have common standards. In another case, we make interoperability solutions. Let's say it's like uh, making a bridge between A and B. And that's really quite uh, successful. And then we, of course, we, we also are sharing the data or, or, uh, with big mechanisms like the GEOS portal and the Ocean uh, Data Portal. And that's done by uh, having CDATA as a yeah, as a repository, also say um, <coughs> exchanging in a dynamic way and by web services data to those portals, and then people can find them in those portals. And if they see something relevant, they come back to the CDATA infrastructure <coughs> and they shop for it. I already told you about the European Open Science Cloud. There's a big uh, there's a big impetus there. If you see, uh, there was quite recently there was the EOS summit in the summit in uh, Brussels, and there was uh, several DGs uh, from DG Connect, DG Research, and they all said we, uh, the, the coming years we have to invest tens of millions of euro in this EOSC, and there will be several calls. So far, a lot of concentration has been on the, or a lot of focus on the, on the, the, the infrastructure, so that's called the hardware and the software, but more and more they also are uh, agreed that the research infrastructures, let's say the content and the people, that they also have to play a role in the, in the further rollout of this uh, research infrastructure. And what we're doing with CDATA, we, have, we, have we are seen as the marine domain representative. So we have a big stake in there, and we have to uh, work together with them to, to make it work. And in this case, the UDOT is, is a nice uh, linking factor to, to, uh, to be close to, to, the, to the heart of the EOSC development. Also, many of you have heard or are involved in EMODNET. EMODNET is an, uh, was another initiative in 2008. And this was started by DG Mare, let's say the, another the DG of the European Commission. And they said, let's start with the European Marine Observation and Data Network. And, uh, and luckily, we were able to uh, convince them in the early stage that they should couple up with CDATANET. And then we more or less say, bottom up, CDATANET meets top down, and top down is EMONET. And this way, we were able to, to, uh, yeah, to move very fast with EMONET, because they immediately had a backbone for the data infrastructure. And by the way, also for biology, uh, Eurobis was adopted as a backbone for the for the Emonet. So this way, Eurobis and Cdata, they all uh, say they they are driving most of the portals in uh, in uh, Emonet. And on top of that, in Emonet, uh, it was more focused on getting more people on board, more data centers, and also doing something with the data, making generic products for Europe. And that has resulted in uh, in quite a a big expansion of the CDATA uh, network because we went from about 60 connected centers to to nowadays 113. So it's a lot of uh, and a lot of this is, has come in through the Emonet uh, uh, Emonet initiative. And the nice thing is, of course, in Emonet is that uh, new new players, new data centers, they are simply uh, asked to adopt the CDATA standards and to play the role as the, all the other centers to make their data more accessible through the infrastructure. And then on top of that, we do more with the data. We work on the quality and we work on the products. 
And that's also at the same time a nice uh, uh, confrontation because if you use the data yourself, then you also find out there are some issues with uh, some of the data sets. And there's more attention than for the quality. Give you some examples of Ebonet. Ebonet is, um, yeah, it has different thematics. So from bathymetry to human activity, so all the different uh, domains. And you could say there are, each of them is a network, is a network of institutes who are uh, yeah, competent in those domains. And of course, there's a lot of overlap because we have many multidisciplinary uh, research institutes who are in, uh, in, in most of the uh, different uh, thematics. Very important system, the core system in the C data is the CDI system, the CDI data discovery and access. And as you all know, let's say it's it's quite a, it's a granule uh, granule level. It means that we we try to uh, have a detailed uh, overview of all the available data. So it could be a sample, a water quality sample. It could be a long time series of uh, waves or currents. It could be a bathymetry survey. It could be a seismic survey, and and so on. So it's uh, and the CDI, let's say, is is uh, a little bit the the engine behind many of those uh, projects that I was naming. And it works in a federated uh, way. So this is the, uh, the the old setup. We have all the individual data centers. We have now more than 110. <laughs> they carry or they manage data for many originators. And presently, we have about 650 originators. So it could be a lot of universities who, who uh, store their data in those data centers, like uh, the NODCs, the National Oceanographic Data Centers. And then we have on the other side, we have a, a common uh, metadata catalog with the shopping mechanism. And uh, this way people can find and request access and then download data from this infrastructure. These are the existing uh, user interfaces. And also these interfaces, they, uh, they look still quite modern, but they started about 15 years ago, let's say. In the, and over time, every time they were upgraded, there were elements added, there were new query uh, added and some, some look and feel issues. But it's, uh, it's still the basics that we, that we have, which is still functioning quite well. But, of course, it's time for something new. And, and that's why uh, we have CData Cloud, let's say, also to bring something new, also in this domain. Here I show you the uh, Ebonet Bathymetry. Ebonet Bathymetry is a thematic uh, website of uh, Ebonet. And it's focusing on a digital terrain model. But the CDI service on the left is, uh, is an important element, because before you can make a DTM, you need to have an access to all the bathymetry surveys. And that's why we use this catalog. Because it also then allows us to, to do tracking and tracing. It means that every product, every grid cell, is related to a certain data set. And the data set is then fully described in the CDI system. And right now we have uh, 27,000 bathymetry surveys in Europe that we have now in the system. And uh, more is coming. And they are, have been used or are being used to make this DTM, Digital Terrain Model for Europe, which is served out in tiles, but also as a WMS, as a WCS server. And it's very successful. Let's say almost all the, all the let's say, research institutes, but also the, the dredging, the offshore industry, they're all using now this, B, this DTM as a base layer. Because it has it is, uh, 16 times uh, more resolution than JEPCO for Europe. So really use it and, uh, and more is coming. And it's a very exciting project. It's, uh, but it is only possible because, let's say, the data are well uh, controlled, well managed using the CDI system, and that's the basis to, to go further. And here you see an example of uh, how you can look up the, the, the details of the, of the CDI. Another one is uh, Ebonet Physics. Ebonet Physics is a, is a direct cooperation <coughs> between Eurogoose, Copernicus, and CDATANET. And that means it's, it's aiming at physics, as the name says, uh, currents, waves, uh, sea level, uh, uh, wind, uh, pressure, Temperature. And what we do, in fact, we bring together in this portal, a shop window, we bring together the, the past, the present, and the future, simply speaking. So, CData is the past, we have the long time history. Eurogoose is the present, it has the operational and the CMEMS, the Copernicus, they bring the forecasting, which is the future. So, the past, the present, and the future. And it's also quite successful, and it's a way of a synergy where, again, the infrastructures together, they, uh, they join, they team up to reach to a larger audience of users. Another one is Ebonet Chemistry. I already told you about the importance of the marine strategy framework. In Ebonet Chemistry, we are focusing completely on, let's say, the eutrophication, on contaminants, and on marine litter. And they're quite complicated uh, uh, data. And for that purpose, the vocabularies are uh, enormously important. Because we have tens of thousands of different chemical terms. And we all have to be able to, to, uh, uh, to, to identify them and, uh, and work with those. 
and also harmonize them into uh, common uh, common parameters with common units. <laughs> and here you see a matrix. This is also the CDI uh, service, but then as a matrix, dynamic matrix, where you can say what is the the uh, the <coughs> availability of data in in C areas by different chemical groups. And that means in this case you can hover over the, the colors. The colors give you the indication, but if you hover the mouse, you can see the numbers. If you click on it, you go to the CDI system and you do a query. And that's uh, quite a, a nice way to, to serve out, uh, to show what we have in the store. Here we have GUCs. We also did the project GUCs already a couple of years ago, but then we worked together with the geology and the geophysics uh, community, the, let's say Eurogeo surveys. And we set up, again, we did adopt and adapt the CDI system for their purposes. And there are a lot of uh, data in there, of seismics, of bathymetry, of uh, geological samples. Uh, at the same time, now in Ebonet Geology, there is now the, uh, the European Geological Services. They, they work together on ECDI, European Geological Data Infrastructure. And they set up a new site as part of Ebonet Geology. But they still make use of the CDI service because it's linked, it's one of the layers, the information layers in their new system. Simply because it gives high detailed data and very relevant data also for that purpose. So this is a little bit in this picture. You see how the CDI service in the back, in a virtual way, is a driver behind many different portals. And that means that we use those projects to get more data centers in, to get more data in, and then we use the services to, to feed the data and the metadata to those portals and, ha and fi have people find them. While, of course, if they find something, the shopping is done on the central place, by the CDI infrastructure. So this is a little bit to sketch you the importance of the CDI infrastructure. It's not just uh, a project, but it's really an operational infrastructure. And it has many, many links to different communities and to different projects, and is used on a daily basis. And that's why it's so important that if we are migrating or moving to a new upgrading upgrade system, that you all are motivated, you're all engaged, and you really understand the importance to, to do a good job. <coughs> And I'm pretty sure you understand this because the, you're all here, and that already means something that uh, you want to you want to see and hear what where, where we are going. Now, if you look at the data coverage right now, we have uh, quite a big coverage, uh, global coverage, and we have because of course science is not uh, limited to the European waters, and we have now more than 2.1 million, and you could say that every month there's more, tens of thousands coming in. So it means that end of the year might be. Maybe we have three million, and this is going on. It's really getting more and more and more. And that's also the, the momentum. We have the momentum because we have the, the projects. There's big interest in the products derived from those uh, data, and that, that gives the momentum. And that also means that there will be more projects, let's say, on the horizon to continue that work because people like what we're doing, and they, and they want more, and they're willing to pay for it from, let's say, the funding agencies. Let's look at the current infrastructure because um, we have. Uh, this is a picture that we draw uh, many, many years ago, like say more than 15, <laughs> and it's quite simple. We have the user interface, we have the CDI catalog, we have a, a shopping mechanism with uh, with what we call the request status manager, which is the administrative uh, part for tracking and tracing uh, transactions, and then on your level, let's say on the data center level, we have the download manager, and the download manager is a component that. Uh, talks to your databases or your data files, and it talks to the central system, to the request status manager, to be able to handle your requests and, and uh, in the end, make the data available for, uh, for the user. And that's, uh, this, this works uh, yeah, nicely, it has worked all the time, but uh, there are some issues over time, and we have collected uh, quite some. Uh, one is performance, because what, what happens is that uh, a user can fire off a shopping basket, and the basket can contain data from different uh, providers, say multiple data centers. And that means in this case that, that a user then has to uh, download the data from each individual center, of course through the portal, but it's still a lot of work. So if I make a collection of 60 data centers, I have to do 60 clicks, let's say, to get the data from 60 data centers. And also each of those data centers, they have their own configuration, their own technical configuration, which means that there can be delays, there can be, uh, uh, sim sim some could be off for a while, and of course we have monitoring, but it means that we have a chain, and in the chain we, have, we could have weak links. And that means the, the user experience is, uh, is experiencing, it's, uh, according to them, is more work than, than it has to be. Well, we always say, be happy, 
you get all this data from these 60 centers in in a, in a day. So why are you why are you worrying? But okay, it can we can do better. Uh, that that's for sure. Also, what we see is that uh, uh, some centers are not always online, and we do a lot of monitoring. We have uh, NADIOS, so that means that we are pinging every center to see if it's working. And also, every day we have, uh, uh, we call it the mystery or the robot shopping. That means that we send out a shopping cycle to uh, each of the data centers to see if they can perform and deliver the data as uh, requested. And also there we see that some people have issues, and then the help desk, of course, immediately contacts you, and, uh, and together with you we try to solve the issue to get operational again. Um, but it's, 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 it's some sort of a weakness in the system, because we have all these diff these chains. And like I say, we started with 60, and now we have 113. There will be maybe you know, 120, 140, so it's, it's growing. So it's a situation that we say we have to make it more robust, more, uh, more performing. Also, what we found out is some quality issues. It means that in Awanet specifically, specifically, but also with CMEMS, we, uh, we used the data ourselves, we were shopping ourselves, we used the data, and then we found, despite all the standard formats and all the tools that are provided, we still found some issues, let's say some differences, different interpretations. And that's, of course, you can make a, you can make a frame, but it doesn't mean that everybody uh, in, yeah, understands the frame in the same way, and that, that's... Uh, and then we can get quality issues that some people, some files are not giving what we would like to see. And that's also something we say, hey, if we, in the present system, we can oversee all the metadata. We do a lot of quality control on metadata to make them harmonized, to make them standardized, and to uh, also with your help, of course, let's say, uh, to, to validate them before we publish. But with the data, it's, it's all on your plate. While we are not able to say uh, in the central place also to have a look at this, and Apparently, we uh, we should have this complementary look to make it even better. The last thing is that we have the download manager. The download manager was also delivered and developed over time. Uh, it has been there have been many upgrades, but it it has been quite challenging for uh, several people, let's say, to install the download manager. We have people that do it in a day. We have people that uh, really, uh, yeah, over a month almost, let's say, by uh, of course not not full time, but really trying trial and error. And it has to do a little bit with uh, the different configurations that people have, because uh, some people have very complicated configurations uh, in their <laughs> in their uh, technical. Others have made it for quite simple. They simply take uh, they they bought a server, they put it outside the firewall, and say this is our CD plan station. That makes it more much more simple, of course, uh, that uh, that uh, it's open and uh, accessible. Uh, but anyway, it's it's something that we have to do about. We have to do something to make it easier, because it's uh, it can be. Uh, <clears throat> and therefore, there were some principles defined as part of CData Cloud. We're going to move to the cloud, and in that cloud, we want to have a lot of storage, and we want to have good, uh, yeah, fast computing, high performance computing. And in fact, what we want to do is to, is to uh, make re replicate data, let's say, from your your centers to that cloud. But those will be the unrestricted data, because as you know, in CData, we make use of we qualify data as unrestricted or CDATA license and restricted to be negotiated. And we have chosen that we said, let, let's take the unrestricted data, move them to the cloud, make a copy, which is, of course, still your, your ownership. You, you don't lose your ownership. It's just a matter of, a, an ex, that's called an external hard, hard drive eh, where you move the data. And the, the restricted data stay with you, and, and that's still negotiable. And then we have... Uh, we have to set up a dynamic replication from your center. Every time you do a new metadata update or a new <coughs> new set of, meta, of uh, metadata, then you also, the data associated with that will be replicated to that cloud. And in the cloud, we have a buffer. And the buffer then allows us to do some additional quality control. Uh, we already do it on the metadata, but we can also do it on the data. And also we can look at the, the coherency between or coherence between the data and the metadata. That's also one of the checks. But also what we can do is we can extract some data from the data and make them part of the search process. So we can enlarge the search process, the CDI uh, discovery, for instance, by adding the PO1 parameter. Some people have asked for this. And maybe in the, in the near future, we also can, can start searching for values. So you can say, I want all the temperature measurements in the Mediterranean uh, with a temperature higher than 25 degrees. And there are some, so uh, we should be able to find them. But those are things that you have when you have the data also at hand. In a pool, you're able to, to perform those, uh, those things. 
Another thing that we uh, want to do is uh, we have Inspire. We have also other uh, domains. We have this interoperability. And for that purpose, there are other formats that people want to see, the implementation rules of Inspire. And you can all, you say, we can all try to work on this ourselves, or we can work together, make a service, and the service can then handle the transformations. And especially for Inspire, it's, it's a, a very nice uh, perspective to have on top of the Cdata portal also an Inspire plugin or a transformation service, which allows us to, to deliver the data also in the Inspire format. And there is a, quite some work already ongoing for this, so we, uh, we have done an analysis on the feasibility of this. The mapping is possible. Also, we are in discussion with the JSC team who is doing Inspire, and they are now, say, more or less uh, evaluating, reviewing our, our mapping. And we hope to get some sort of a stamp from them that we are compliant, and then we can set up this service. The uh, last thing that we also want to do is, is versioning. It means provenance, because what we see right now, we, uh, the CDI system, the current version is always the last version, and there's only one version, more or less. So it means you can make an update of an existing, and then the metadata is updated, but also the file is updated. But then there is only one version. And in the, in the new domain, if we talk about this uh, environmental management and marine strategy framework, they want to see also historical files. Because there are products, there are assessments being made with data, and that might be different versions of that data set. And for that purpose, we have to do provenance. We have to bring in the history of the different files over time. And also, that's, that's one of the functionalities that we introduce into this uh, Cdata Cloud uh, upgrading. This is the new infrastructure, or the new architecture. And there's not so much difference with the previous one. Only uh, there are some details. One, you can see in the middle, you see here, uh, there is a, a cloud, data cloud. So that, that acts as a cache, as a data cache, to, to uh, replicate the unrestricted data. We have on the right, we have uh, some additional quality control and transformation that, that is working together with the cloud. Let's say it works on the data in the cloud. And of course, it works together with the metadata, and, uh, which is uh, as usual in the catalog. And on the bottom half, you see that the download manager will be replaced by a replication manager. So we're talking nowadays about the replication manager replacing the download manager and making it a more simple, uh, modern component that should be more easy to install and to configure. And it has also less functionality than the, than the previous one. Or different functionality, I would say. This way, we hope to, uh, yeah, to perform better for the users. One is that we, uh, the speed will go up, because there's uh, the users, they can search for data, and then they can have a download, in fact, uh, a combined download is only one link because all the data is at hand so it can be the, the shopping basket the robot can yeah, collect the data from the cloud and say I put them all in a package and then I deliver to the to the client also the performance should go up then because there's a consistent performance there's uh, the cloud resources there are the, uh, the computers that means that it takes some time but still you, you cannot do it in seconds but in minutes but you don't have to wait for the weak link there's only one processing unit. So uh, Also, the quality should go up because we have more coherence, we do more checks. So together with you, we hope, of course, that you do a very good job and you do a good job, but that you keep on doing that job, that we don't have to correct too much at the center and then sending it back to you. But still, there is this, this uh, validation, let's say. This, uh, this additional validation is now, is now possible. The tracking and tracing will continue to be as it is. So we still have the request status manager, but what we did, what we want to do or have done, is that we this time the the user part, we have now integrated in the in the in the discovery. While in the past, let's say people always they were they were checking out, they were discovering data, and when they found something, they put it in the basket, and then they were confronted with you have to register, but they still have to do. But then later they had to go to the request status manager, let's say a separate entity, to find the progress of the of the shopping. And that, in practice, that gave uh, quite some misunderstanding that, uh, that as we experienced. And what we uh, have done now is that we integrated this. So there's now a so-called My C Data Cloud. That means that you are welcome to register or to log in immediately when you go to the site. You can still do uh, anonymous browsing, but if you want, you can log in immediately. And then you get some customized services, including that you immediately have access to your shopping mascot and to your request status manager. And you will see that later today in the interface. And it's much uh, a much nicer experience, and it's much more 
like the modern uh, e-shops like Amazon and others are doing. It's, it's the same experience. That uh, If you log in, you find all your previous transactions, you can find your shopping profiles, you can uh, etc. etc. And as I say, we will have versioning, so it means that you are able to, um, you will be, the searching will always be done on the latest, the current version, the latest version. But if you find the details, there will be links to the older versions, if they are available. And from there, you can also say, I want to shop for the older ones and not for the new one. Well, of course, from the, the, from the product standpoint or from the external standpoint, those who are using versions, they always have their links and the links are consistent. So the links also can link to older versions straight from, from uh, let's say, from the outside by a web service. And that always works. It's a little bit like going to a shop. Huh? Let's say they have the latest product in the latest article in the shop. That's where you, you can buy or you can uh, you know, take. And uh, while you can still have an older product, and, and with the older product you can also go back to the shop and have it repaired if needed. It's the same principle. It's, uh, it's uh, both available. Also, there are uh, benefits for the uh, the data centers. So for you, let's say uh, those of you, because you will have a replication manager and also the import manager. It means that we have set up some dashboards and they give you more control about the process. So in the past or in the present, like I say presently, you are sending your data always, the metadata always to uh, Maris, let's say to our uh, support, CDI support desk. That is still possible. But by the replication manager, you will have your own control station. So you'll be able to use the replication manager to, to bring together a, a batch and then to fire off that batch to the cloud. And then you can follow by the import manager, you can follow the whole process, how this batch is being processed over time. And today, let's say, uh, there will be some presentations given about the working of the replication manager and also about the import dashboard. And we'll do, an, we do, we'll do together a metadata data ingestion. You will see how that works. But it gives you some more control, and in this way, more management of, of the, yeah, of, of what you are bringing to the central system. Uh, the RSM, as usual, allows you to have a better, a good overview of all the transactions. So who is ordering your data, and, uh, and etc. But it will be much faster because we have improved the performance. We are now using Elasticsearch, and that really improved the performance enormously. So it makes it more possible to make a nice report of millions of, of transactions. You can click the button and you get a report. The system also has to be set up, of course, to handle the restricted uh, data, because we have restricted data and there will be a special uh, process for that. Uh, everybody will be outfitted with a replication manager, and that, uh, but it will be easier to install and to configure. And we still will maintain the what we call the the alternative, the interim solution, because we have some data centers who, uh, who do not have a replication manager or a download manager. They have an interim. It means a, a semi-automatic process. And several of those uh, centers, they are from the, I would say, from the hydrographic service uh, world, because they are not allowed to connect to anything, let's say, by law. And for that purpose, we made this alternative that they do semi-automatic. But also, uh, as part of this project, we want to streamline that process, making it more, uh, yeah, more streamlined, uh, that uh, for them to manage the data and also make it part of the total. And a very important item is there that right now, people who are using interim, they always make all the data restricted, simply to have a, a manual request uh, negotiation, while a lot of the data can be unrestricted. And that's in the present system is, is difficult, but in the new system that will be possible. So we'll invite also the interim solution to check and to uh, review whether they can release some of their data also as unrestricted to make it part of the cloud for faster delivery to users. These are the new components. So we, so we have the local software. That's, um, you know, um, tomorrow there will be a day uh, dedicated to this. It's the Mikado and the Octopus, the Nemo, let's say the, the software tools that you use to prepare your metadata and your data. There will be tomorrow some, some uh, exercises on this. Uh, then we have the replication manager that has to be installed at each of the centers for uh, yeah, talking or exchanging metadata and data with the import manager and with the UDOT cloud. Then we have the UDOT cloud, which where we have the, the storage and we have some processing services for the quality control. And then finally we have the upgraded CDI interface. And that uh, later in the afternoon we'll uh, play with that interface 
we'll first of all do a small presentation and then in fact we give you uh, access to this and we hope that in the coming months you will play more with this and also give us them feedback which helps us to further refine that better version that we have right now so this is a look on this one so this is my uh, yeah, I hope I've given you a good background to say why it's so important that you all dedicate time to, to move to the new system. And also I gave you the basics. And now my colleagues, they will give you more details about the different components. And then in the afternoon, we have some, some uh, let's say, hands-on experience and we can play around. And, uh, and also we have uh, interactive, let's say, give your feedback. We have a survey forum uh, over time and we'll see what happens. Okay, any questions so far on this? Are you all motivated? Are you all um, willing to go to do the next step? Are you looking forward? <laughs>